um, attendees. Okay. So, hey everybody, we are starting our meeting. Apologies, I am in the car. I'm not driving, so <clears throat> no worries there. Or uh, Pat is going to put the agenda to the chat. You can see it. I think he put in just before we opened it up. So um, make sure it goes to everybody. And the meeting is being recorded. So uh, I don't see the numbers going up. People are, are in, hopefully indoors and not breathing that smoggy air. We're in the car and my husband is driving and I'm on the West Side Highway, which is always a joy. Um, I only have so anyway, to so well, hosting to host and panelist, Madam President. Okay, let me see. Um, let me try opening it. Hold on a second because I'm struggling. Icon and everything. I see if I can do it. Can then someone else try to? Um, Jeremy, can you post that to everyone? Do you think? Um, yep, I that will. I great. will take care of it. Perfect. Thank you. Actually, I'm going to change my glasses to my reading glasses so I can see things a little better. So it's going to be a very short, very modified meeting. Thank you all for your patience. Thank you, everybody, for um, coming. And I'll give everybody a couple more minutes. We're up to 21. Um, and we will not have speakers until the um, a representative from the Brooklyn Chamber of Commerce will be coming to speak to us. Um, later on, we're waiting actually for Harvey uh, to get home, and so he will be able to introduce her. Um, the Montauk Club, they um, wisely canceled the meeting because since it's such a, a lovely old building, um, <laughs> all the smoke was getting indoors there too. So needless to say, it was not very healthy for anyone involved. Yeah, and sorry, Emma, I just want to pop in to just kind of just generally apologize on behalf of Gannick for anyone who may have actually gone to the Montauk Club and found out the hard way that it was canceled. Um, we did try to get out emails and notifications as quick as we can, but obviously it was a crazy afternoon and this was a very, very fast moving situation. And uh, so thank you for all those who, who did unfortunately make out the trek to Brooklyn and we appreciate your understanding as we, we were doing our best today as all, all of New York is doing. Yeah, we were honestly, we were hoping to have the actual meeting there. Oh, be New York without a siren. Um, we were actually hoping to have the meeting there, but um, and they made, they're the ones who made the call. So, and when they, as soon as they made the call, we did let everyone know. So, yeah, so Jeremy said, thank you for your patience and apologies for those who made it out there. And um, hopefully, and Bob said, we will sooner or later have a meeting there um, when, hopefully when we can all breathe, so which will also be also be very good. All right, so it's a couple minutes past six. I think the numbers are pretty much stationary where they are um, right now. Um, so let's get started. I don't have many announcements to make, um, just, to, just to, you know, tell everybody, please be careful out there. Please wear your masks. If you've saved up those N95s, now's the time to bring them out again. Um, it is not, not nice. Um, fortunately, upstairs at the observatory, the clouds stopped turning that violent yellow, and now they're just full of clouds. The smoke is you know, just sort of a pale gray, and it's sort of gray. I can see a little bit of the sun outside, which is just sort of surrounded by this odd aura. So everyone, please be careful. Please be careful. I know a lot of uh, guides were asking whether they should cancel their tours or not. If you're not feeling safe and you're not comfortable breathing, you know, this is, you know, everyone's health and safety comes first. Um, so, yeah, so, so please do be aware of that. Now, in terms of organic business, just a, um, an announcement. I know this will be brought up um, by the education committee. As you know, we do, we did change the FAM tour policy. There will be a small charge of $5 per person for the FAM tours. This is something that the board really, really considered carefully. We really discussed it um, and how to um, try to hopefully solve once and for all the issue of people just not showing up for FAMs or counseling at the last minute. Um, I'm sure you all have seen this in your own work, in your own experiences. When somebody has to pay for something, they tend to take it a little bit more seriously. If it's free, they think, ah, it's not such a big deal. So hopefully that will be, um, that will that'll improve matters. And um, I think the education committee will be d addressing that more. Uh, the other thing is that um, 
the WFTGA, the World Federation of Tourist Guides Association, in January. They're holding their um, conference in Siracusa in Sicily. The conference information, the conference link is up on the WF, um, WFTGA website. They have an early bird, it's a little savings of 50 euros for on the registration. And they have, um, they posted the other day about, the other week about, um, they have 150 slots for the early bird price. And it's basically first come first serve. So when they finish those 150 um, early birds um, registrations have been taken up, there won't be any more. So if you're interested, I highly encourage you to go. Um, the board is going to be in the, you know, everyone will be discussing, discussing the budget over the summer. Uh, we will not be providing a number of stipends. We are just we are really focusing. We want to focus, especially next year, Ganic to really refocus on its mission, on um, keeping every, um, you know, trying to be more conscious of and be more aware of also um, in terms of all the work our volunteers can do for the organization. So we um, we encourage you all to attend, but we will not be providing uh, uh, lots of stipends or conference travel in the upcoming um, in the upcoming fiscal year in the upcoming budget. Um, that's really all I have for uh, sort of general announcements. Um, one thing we are doing, and, and Anne will talk about this with membership, but I'd like to reiterate it, um, this sort of our organic membership drive. I feel like, you know, we're getting pledges on WNYC or WQXR. Bring a friend to a meeting. We had some people interested in coming to today's meeting, of course, unfortunately that was canceled, but, you know, we'll have an, our next um, meeting will be, they're always entertaining, they're always interesting, great speakers, great venues. Um, so bring somebody who you may know um, who's a tour guide and who's not a GANIC member. Remember all the great things that we offer um, from the FAM tours to the digital library of all the different um, lectures and presentations that you can listen to, access to great venues, access to incredible sites. Um, it's just posted, I think, for Carnegie Hall. There's going to be a, back, um, a, a site visit to Carnegie Hall. Um, Bob has lots of great things in the works, and these are just open to GANIC members. So tell your friends who are tour guides who haven't joined GANIC that, you know, not only do you get the camaraderie and the fellowship of joining our great, um, our great association, but you also get um, the advantage of access to places that you may not be able to visit um, on your own. And, uh, you know, and jobs, job postings and information about jobs listings. That's always a great thing. I mean, I've been a professional tour guide for 12 years and every single one of my jobs has been thanks to GANIC. So, you know, it's really worth your time. So that's really it from me for now. Um, we are going to move on to um, our, our next step. We're going to have the, oops, sorry, I just disappeared. We're going to have um, the industry partner um, vote will be um, sent via email, okay? And the industry partners are Hard Rock Cafe and Top View, the um, double-decker bus company. And there has been some discussion about that. If you check out the Organic Facebook group, you will see those discussions there. The announcements when they go out, you can also um, discuss in the um, forum on the GANIC website. But um, you will receive an online budget um, ballot. They're all done online now. Um, Jeremy, if you want to just explain to everyone just quickly um, how that works, now the, the timing and everything. Yeah, so uh, sometime between now and the end of this meeting, all full members will receive an email with the uh, two separate emails, one for each of the uh, potential industry partners that will have a link to the ballot. Once that ballot is opened, you will have 24 hours to vote. Nope, I think we're slightly losing Emma there, but um, yeah, you'll have 24 hours to vote and uh, you know, your these are always your decisions. Uh, anyone can apply to be an industry partner. It's up to you to decide. So, uh, and that goes to all whether, the members. Yeah. Okay, so I think, am I, can you all hear me again or coming and going? I think I'm coming, okay, got me, yeah. So like, um, and Jeremy was saying, it's only for full members. 
Okay, if you're a provisional member, you will not be getting the ballot. So I'm going to actually stop my video. That often helps with the um, with the bandwidth. And so um, we're going to move into our committee reports now. So the first committee report will be the awards committee read by Patrick Casey. Patrick, unmute yourself on. That's very strange. I thought it was unmuted. Okay, can you hear me now? Okay. So in place of Sarah, who is speaking of the weather has actually been knocked down by having to work all day under these conditions I'm filling in for her. So from Sarah for the awards committee, uh, while we are still on committee hiatus, I have a few pieces of exciting news to share. The first bit of news is that Bob Gilbert has connected with Diane Ruff from Little Island, our outstanding achievement in support of New York City Tourism Award winner. And they've reached out to Ghana, looking to partner with us on future work, including some FAM events with summer dates to be announced soon. And I'm sure that the Industry Relations Committee will be speaking to this as well. Uh, the awards committee is thrilled to see how our committee missions and activities have been able to work together. The second announcement is that as of Tuesday, June 6th, we brought the awards website, ganacapitalawards.weebly.com, completely up to date, including a few new pages. And we will be posting our blog regularly with news from past nominees and winners, as well as other events related to our award categories that might be of interest to members for both their own enjoyment and for future nominations. Please peruse the blog as this happens. We would love to have your input, so please feel free to email awards at ganic.org with suggestions for blog features. The next announcement is that we will be resuming work soon, and we'd love to have you there for it. If you are interested in joining the awards committee, please reach out by email, again, awards at ganic.org, so that you can be added directly to our committee mailing list. We meet in the evenings, Previously on Mondays or Tuesdays, once a month, we plan on remaining on Zoom for a while, making it easier for members to meet, or to meet and work around their schedules and needs. We are specifically eager for people with experience networking, both for help gathering sponsors and signing on as presenters, but all skill sets are welcome. Thank you. Great, thank you, Patrick. Thank you very much on behalf of awards and thank you, Sarah. Um, too. Uh, so our next will be Education Committee, and that is Nina Mende will be speaking. Again, to unmute yourself first, Nina. Sorry, I didn't know I was speaking. Okay. Um, for education, uh, we just want to thank uh, all the people who organized the, the Montois Club. I know Bob works with Harvey. I think Bob it was a, a one-woman show, a one-man show, Bob Galver, and he did the, pre, the speakers and also the pre-meeting fam site visit for the Montauk. So th thanks for that. Uh, we're going to cut and paste uh, in the minutes the, the exact wording of the new guidelines. And this, this was sort of initiated with the, with the board. We, we had the edit committee had some uh, uh, input too. So just to say that uh, we have a policy in place already, a uh, 48 hour policy, uh, which begins exactly, let's say if the tour begins at 9 a.m. On, on let's say Thursday, and it, it's two days before at 9 a.m. that 48 hours kicks in. So sometimes you're not able to cancel if you don't do it, you know, exactly 48 hours before, and that's why you'll you'll have trouble canceling. So uh, if you don't cancel in time, there's always been a $25 uh, penalty uh, for not canceling. Uh, this is particularly important when we're dealing with venues, because uh, it's quite embarrassing if we have we have a, a lot of people canceling and we have people who are on a wait list wanting to get in. So it's, it's quite fair uh, to guides to, to do that. Uh, also, um, if you uh, for, sometimes there are some people who for some reason or another have a tendency to cancel often. 
uh, with not that many notice and not show up and they, they'll they'll pay the the twenty five dollar fee but it 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 just to discourage people from continuing that behavior uh, if you if you cancel once you pay twenty five dollars if you cancel a second time you know uh, not within the forty eight hours in other words you don't show up for a tour. Uh, you don't cancel within 48 hours, then you'll get your penalty will go up to 50. And so it, it just it goes up incrementally. If you, so if you're you have a tendency to cancel tours, think about it because you're going to be stuck with paying uh, cancellation penalties. Uh, then there is a, a uh, we're going to print all this out. You know, I, I think uh, John Semlack can chime in. Um, we're going to print all the details, the actual wording out, and there's going to be a $5 fee that uh, Emma mentioned. Now, this, 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 this meeting was initiated by the board and approved by the board. As committees, we follow, you know, we follow through on whatever the board says, because we are not independent. We are arms and legs of this organization. But this is a six month thing, uh, uh, charging $5 fees uh, for FAM tours is just to encourage people to know that they're committing to something special. Also, if you don't show up for a tour, you really uh, put uh, the people on the wait list at a disadvantage. And it's really people give their heart and souls to give these tours. They, they really share a lot of wonderful knowledge. They do a lot of research. They do it all for free. And it's very disheartening when people cancel, you know, at the last minute, you think you have 20 people and you have, let's say, 12 or whatever. So that's why we just encourage people to uh, follow the cancellation policy. Again, we're, uh, this is a tryout uh, for six months and, uh, and we encourage you, encourage your feedback. You know, if we want, uh, I, I never objected to, Subsidy. We we have a history of subsidizing tours, you know, in the past, and uh, for things that were expensive like admissions. So, and we also always subsidize. You'd always have to pay a fee for bus trips, and a very small fee for uh, professional development programs because they required, you know, a rental space. So, so this is a little new. I'm adjusting to it, you know, I'm an old time Ed member. And uh, I, the thing that gets me through this is that I think that we're really short, we could use the funds uh, and uh, there are administrative costs, everything's volunteer. So this can help uh, with the, uh, the education committee to bring you some really nice programming. And I think this this uh, applies to other events as well, industry relations events, right? So correct me. So if there's something sponsored by another committee, uh, these cancellation fees are in effect. I don't know about the networking happy hour. Someone can correct me. There may be some questions about that. So if I haven't uh, put forth the program as a board, uh, that's my understanding of it, but we will have it all down in detail uh, for you and really encourage you feedback. This is a democratic organization. And if you have some suggestions on how to work with last minute uh, cancellations and no shows, we really appreciate it. You know, give, give us your education, write us a note, you know. Uh, now, uh, Warius, uh, thank, thank you for past FAMs. We had some really great FAM tours uh, this past May. Bob Dylan, Bruce Springsteen, and John Hammond. Music History in the West Village, Ann McDermott. Uh, the Elizabeth Foundation for the Arts, Bob Gelber organized. Uh, the History of the Lower East Side with Richard Soden. Uh, queer Art History at the Metropolitan Museum of Art with Karen, Kevin Lawrence. And uh, on Thursday, uh, we have a fam tour encore that uh, Andrea Coyle still wants to put on uh, the Italian encore. Um, actually, Italian Nina, story. I'm sorry to in, sorry to interrupt you. Andrea has actually just uh, announced she sent out an email to the attendees. She is canceling the tour actually tomorrow. Oh, she is okay. Because I knew that yeah. at one point. Okay, good to know. So, it was a very uh, this was a very recent last minute decision, like oh, everything oh, today okay. was. Yeah. Um, but Andrea, just as an update, Andrea will be contacting the education committee, folks like Nina, to attempt to reschedule it if 
everybody's schedule okay. will allow. So, okay. Um, yeah. Oh, that's good news because it's a fantastic tour, and uh, I know the weather, the the elements are not with it. So I'm glad that she's flexible about that. Uh, and then I think Bob is announcing the Carnegie Hall uh, BAM site visits for the 18th and 19th. Uh, we're really happy to work, you know, uh, education and industry relations works hand in hand. You, you need marketing and you need arts and uh, education. And it all, all is together. Uh, and then organic webinar coming up that uh, again, Bob DeGelber is really amazing all on all these committees. Omni, the MTA's new contactless fair payment system, June 29th at 6.30. Uh, and uh, that I think will be on is one of our uh, seminar webinars that I think that if you miss it, my understanding is it's not a one shot thing, Bob maybe you can explain it, but uh, it'll be in our system because most of our uh, webinars uh, are accessible to GANIC members after the fact. Sometimes some people don't want, you know, are very specific and they only want to do it once. But I think this will be available if you can't make it at 6.30, but Bob will correct me. Uh, and uh, while most of the fans are in person, as is, Emma mentioned, we have a great library of guest speakers at previous meetings, fam tours, professional development programs, webinars. It's just so great. So you can be home anywhere in the world, log on with your membership login, and just learn something new all the time. Our next education committee core meeting, I believe sometimes it changes, but I think it, it usually is the third Wednesday of the month or the third week of the month. And I, it looks like it's gonna be uh, June 21st at six o'clock on Zoom. I uh, we, are, we always want to meet you. And at the beginning of the meeting, they're open to new members. And uh, and uh, it, any and I'll just mention some people on the education committee, Bob Gelber, Jeremy Wilcox, John Semlack, Lisa Puccio, Minna Sharp, myself, Susan Birnbaum, and Eileen Rourke. Uh, and you can sidle up to any anyone that you feel comfortable with. And if you have a question or you have an idea or have a contact for a guest speaker, that's one way. But we do have a proposal link uh, that you can always log into, which we prefer you to log into if you have ideas for FAM tours, guest speakers and professional development programs. So thank you. Great, thank you uh, very I'm much. I'm just gonna jump you. in. Actually, Emma, I just wanna jump in because there's a couple of questions in the Q&A. That for yeah. regarding Nina's report that I want to handle. Um, so uh, I just want to get to these one person. Uh, well, Robin mentions that the chat is disabled. I'm not sure why that would be. I, I will I'll, I'll take her word for it. Um, but uh, I apologize for that. So if you have questions, just dump them in the Q&A because that seems to be uh, that seems to be working. So I want to answer some of these other questions. Um, uh, Erica uh, Chamberlain, who's a, a, a new applicant, asks about getting a mailing list for FAM tours. So just to know, you do have to be, because the FAM tours are for members uh, only, the emails about the FAM tours do go out to uh, to members uh, uh, only, um, and those are always sent out when the FAM tours list. But we do occasionally do, um, I've been very lax on this, a uh, an ease newsletter that goes out to everybody that has some of the FAM tours listed. So we do try to let even people who aren't members know about those. So. Uh, I will be in contact with uh, her directly about how to get on that that newsletter. Um, because Jeremy, we're going to be interviewing her very soon. Okay, very great. shortly. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and um, to interview uh, Susan Montauk, Solar but... had. Uh, yeah, no worries. Uh, so Susan Solar had a question about if you're on the wait list, how do you find out what the possibility is? So the the answer is basically if you don't hear from us. It is what it is. So the while the apricot is set up so that if somebody cancels and you say the, the wait list is in order of who joined and when. So if you're number one on the wait list and I cancel, you will automatically get an email saying that you are registered. Um, and uh, there's, so there's just no way for you as a member, unfortunately, to know what it is because we have no idea how many people are going to cancel, if any. So 
just you have to just keep an eye out for for your emails. That's basically the answer to that. Uh, and um, someone asks, when will the five dollar charge start, and how are we going to pay? So that five dollar charge that was discussed for fam tour registrations that starts in July. Um, the idea was that it would be a six month trial to see how it works uh, with the six months starting in July and, and kind of ending in January when the new board will uh, take in effect later in January. Um, so those of you who signed up for the Carnegie know that there was no charge. So that $5 charge will be starting uh, next basically in about a month. So that's hope that answered all those questions. All right, and I'll send it back to Emma. Great, thank you very much, uh, Jeremy. So um, the next on the agenda, we're gonna hear back from Patrick Casey, who's going to read on behalf of government relations. All righty, now I'm playing myself. Okay, we already have some good news regarding introduction 1009. Now, if you've not been following or new to GANIC, introduction 1009 is the revived New York City Council legislation that will require the presence of guides on double-decker buses. We're very happy to report that 1009 already has three sponsors and it's not even gotten out of committee yet. And we need just three more. It's a simple majority vote on the council committee uh, for consumer and worker protection. Now we've been told by various council members that city budget negotiations and the upcoming election cycle will be consuming much of the council's time. I don't really care about that so much. That should not stop our advocacy. The vote out of committee is a simple majority. The Council Committee for Work of Consumer and Work Protection does have a meeting scheduled for June 20th. We are not on that agenda yet, but if we get enough emails coming in, enough council members on that committee interested, we could wind up on that agenda. Here's who we've got so far. The committee chair, and this is a big win, the committee chair, Council Member Velasquez from the Bronx, the original sponsor, Gail Brewer out of District 6, the Upper West Side, and Shakir Krishna, District 25, that's Jackson Heights and Elmhurst. Now the next steps, how did we get these three? We are gonna repeat these, the steps. You gotta start writing uh, council members who are on the committee. Eric Botcher, District 3. Botcher, I'm gonna tell you upfront has been not responsive to any increase for anybody. From anybody, if you've got any, anyone in this fellowship has a lead, use it. Julie Menon, District Five, that's Yorkville, up to East Harlem. Now she's she has responded to some inquiries. She has said that she is going to not make any decision until there's been a committee hearing. Couldn't stop anybody from prompting her. It's in the interest of public safety and the City of New York to see this intro be passed and become law. Dawn Abreu, District 7, Morningside Heights up to Washington Heights. So the Upper Upper West Side, we need to hear from you. Sent out a couple of emails to members and not gotten any responses. So we do want to encourage everybody to reach out to that council member. Now the others tend to be a little out of Manhattan. They tend to be a little less interested, but we got to try anyway. That's Amanda Farias out of District 18. That's Soundview, Parkchester, and Class and Point. Julie Wong out of District 27. Astoria, Sunnyside, Long Island City, and Woodside. I know we got members there. And Shai Ose, Bedford, Stuyvesant, and Crown Heights. Another one, we don't have deep claws into those areas. So please, folks, respond. If you're there, write Council Member Ose. That pretty much brings us up to speed. I will have posted on social media this evening sample letters you can write to your council members with some talking points to get this all started. Uh, if you do hear from any council members, let us know through governmentrelations.gannic.org. Send us an email. It enables us to track who um, is interested or might just benefit from a little more of a nudge or might who somebody might be willing to meet with us. And I'm just getting another email. Oh, that's interesting. Council member Abru is going to make a decision about the bill probably on Friday. And it sounds positive. We may have a fourth. So keep those emails going, folks. We really need your support. We are going up against budgets and we are going up against uh, 
elections for redistricting. So we're going to have to be very loud and very annoying actually to keep council members attention. If there's any questions, I hope I can see them. I'll be looking at the Q&A and chat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. And I'm home. <laughs> Just sort of rustled out of the car and everything. Oh, the wonders of technology. My goodness, it's kind of bonkers when you think about that. Um, and just for your information, it's just as smoky and horrible out in Jersey as it is in the city. Okay, not quite as apocalyptic, but nasty nonetheless. So um, industry relations should be read by Bob Gelber and Harvey. Is Harvey here yet? Harvey, Harvey? Yeah, Harvey's not reading it. Oh, no. Okay. So it's, it's he's just sent me his report, which is okay. what he does every month. Harvey is still on the road with Pat Mazuka, and okay. hopefully he will make it home in time to introduce Yerovine Pacheco of the Brooklyn Chamber of Commerce. So, um, first of all, uh, my apologies for everything that went on today. Uh, Mary Brennan, the president of the Montour Club, and Dylan Yates, the vice president did not contact me early because they were absolutely determined to be able to have the fan for us and have the meeting. But as the day went on, two hours earlier than when Mary called me at three, Dylan went to the building, it was closed. He put on a dozen um, air filters that they purchased during COVID. And two hours later at five of three, there was literally smoke in the building. Because the mm -hmm. building opened in 1891. Mary says they love their building, but it is creaky. It is airy. They freeze in the winter. Uh, so that was why the call came so late. And I reached out to Emma and Jeremy immediately. So uh, I know that Mel was in Brooklyn. Pat and Harvey were already in Brooklyn. And I hope we didn't have too many other people who were left stranded there. Um, but the one good thing out of all of this is that while I had her on the phone, I said, do me a favor, look at your September calendar and there's a very big possibility we'll have the AGM there instead because the theater center cannot host us as they had originally mentioned. They have another show coming in and we had a hard exit at 7 p.m., which just doesn't work for the AGM. All right, so now on to my report. So Harvey has been busy, as Harvey always is busy. Harvey, Pat Mazuka, and you'll excuse the pronunciation, Nirupama Zaveri, who is a Gannett guy who speaks Hindi, attended a tour operator's open house at the Baps Sri Swaminarayan Mandir in Robbinsville, New Jersey on a Wednesday evening back in May. The invitation was received from an industry partner, Pratak Akshkar of Akshkar Tours. And there have been follow-up emails back and forth. Harvey had wanted to attend to help out an industry partner. Also, we, he wanted me to point out that Nuru Palma, the GANIC member, also provided assistance to the Government Relations Committee to contact New York City Queens Councilman Shikhar Krishnan to get him to support the new bill 1009-23, requiring a guide to be on the top level of double-decker sightseeing buses. So we uh, thank everyone for their support. Uh, Harvey and I met with a possible industry partner. We attended lunch at the Sutton Cafe on the Upper East Side, and we're hoping they will follow through. I had a good burger. Harvey had a nice omelet that day. Uh, as you know, Harvey is always in search of industry partners. Uh, together, the two of us met with Nicole Rabinowitz, sales manager at the Hard Rock Cafe. I believe they're up for industry partner vote this evening. And uh, the Hard Rock recently became, or I should say has applied recently to be an industry partner. And we're looking into the possibility of a monthly meeting there. Now, also we've had new news recently. For those of you who have been to Luna Park the several times that you've been invited, uh, Jeff Klein, who was manager at Luna Park, has left. 
but he has repositioned himself at the Hard Rock Cafe. So we will connect with Jeff. I don't know what his connection would be in terms of us having a meeting, but Jeff has always been extremely generous with his time and space to Gannick members. So hopefully that will work out at Hard Rock. Uh, Harvey also viewed postings for guides on the Indeed website, sent emails to listers, inviting them to post them on the Gannick website. And there were various organizations, including Cozy Meals, which are wine tours, CBT Management, which does brewery tours, Intercruzy Shoreside and Port Services, Experience Spirits, New York Tour Monkey, Alex's Tours, EF, and Trek Inc. Uh, also, the International Inbound Travel Association, IITA, Renewed Gamma Strategic Affiliation Partnership Agreement. There is no cost to that. And next Tuesday, June 13th, Harvey will be attending the New York City Convention and Tourism Business Card Exchange. So that is Harvey. Now, uh, all of my stuff that I've been trying to gather. So uh, the July meeting will be held at the Museum of the City of New York. All arrangements were made by Education Corps member Susan Birnbaum, who has been a volunteer there for many years. And there also may be some kind of pre-meeting fan. Uh, Susan is looking into it and before, long before everything will be posted, all the details on wild apricots. Uh, the July meeting, I also want to make sure everyone is aware, will not be on the first Wednesday of the month, but the first Thursday of the month, July 6th, since that is their late night. And if we're there when the museum is open, we do not pay. So <clears throat> that's a good thing. I also want to mention that our guest speaker that night will be author Stephanie Azzaroni, who will discuss her book, Mansions, Monuments, and Marvels of Riverside Park, Hudson, Heaven on the Hudson. Our August meeting will take place at Wave Hill. Details will follow, and that was also arranged by Susan Birnbaum. And I also just want to reach out again if anyone has any ideas, any direct suggestions or connections to venues. We were very lucky for that seven, eight months, everything fell into place, but now we are missing a few spaces. So if you have an idea, please reach out to us at industryrelations at gannick.org. Now, uh, if you've looked at Wild Apricot lately, Gannick has been invited to take two tours at Carnegie Hall. We have two dates, Monday, June 19th at 10.30, and Friday, June 23rd at 1030, 20 members allowed on each tour. That took us a year to work on. Harvey first met their sales manager at an event a year ago, and then she disappeared on us, but I found her at the NYC Convention and Tourism Conference two months ago and said, I need to talk to you. And ever since then, she's been extremely cooperative and generous. We have also been invited to the Edge. Uh, Friday, July 28th, 8 a.m. I don't believe it's posted yet, but it's going to be a very unique invite. Because we're being invited pre-opening at 8 a.m., we will also be invited for breakfast. And they will allow up to 60 Gannick members at that visit. And even though our visit is 8 a.m. to 9 a.m., anyone who wishes to remain after 9 a.m. opening is more than welcome to. Now, uh, we also are working on a hip hop fam. Uh, I want to thank Gannick member Rosalind Stigner, who put me in touch with Ralph McDonald, who sits on the advisory council for the Hip Hop Museum. Ralph is the curator of an exhibit at a branch of the Queens Public Library, and he put together this exhibit celebrating the 50th anniversary of hip hop. So this is still in the works. It will take some place in July, but it should be a really exciting event. And with the connection to Ralph McDaniels, it also means that when the Hip Hop Museum actually does open, Gannett will be invited. 
And just this afternoon, I received an email. It took two months. We have just been invited to visit One Willoughby Square in downtown Brooklyn. It's an innovative commercial tower created by architectural firm FX Collaborative, which is a very famous architectural firm in New York. Dan Kaplan, their senior partner, will take us around the building that FX liked so much after they designed it, they actually moved into it as well. That will take place Wednesday, July 12th at 4 p.m. And I believe it will allow up to 20 members. Uh, I also have reached out again to the United Nations for another visit, because uh, even though we've had three tours there, there is going to be a new tour on art and architecture, and they will be opening their garden this summer, but only on tours. We also are waiting for dates for a summer event at Little Island, something Patrick mentioned in uh, Sarah's event. As soon as uh, Little Island reached out to me, I let Sarah know what was going on, that they were so excited to win the Gannick Apple Award. They wanted to continue their connection with the Guides Association, and they wanted to thank us in some way. So there will be two invites. One will be during the day, and one will be in the evening. And then last but not least, uh, already mentioned uh, a little bit by Nina, the Omni Zoom. Connie De Palma, who is Senior Vice President of Customer Relations at Omni, and one of her colleagues will be telling us all about the Omni app. And of course, the question that we've all been asking is how will it benefit our clients by having the app on their phone? And uh, for right now, that's it. Over and out. Great. Thank you, Bob. And it's, I mean, I'm so excited about all the, the different um, site visits that are coming up. And that, again, is something that you can um, you can mention to potential um, organic um, new, you know, new members. <laughs> we're we're going to have an event at Little Island just for us. And we're being offered breakfast at the edge. I don't think many other uh, associations give you that. And, you know, full disclosure, I haven't been to the edge. I mean, I work at a darned observatory. I don't need to, I really don't, John, I know. I don't want to go to another observatory. Go and figure. I don't right? know if they'll let you up there. Oh, that's right. I'll be spying for the, <laughs> for the, for the enemy. But anyway, no, I, I promote our other observatories and I always get the question, is it, where's the one with the glass floor? I'm like, it's over there. It's not here. It's that one. So anyway, um, I'm really excited for that. I think that will be really great, Bob. Um, you do um, you do wonders, and as um, Jonathan just pointed out, Ralph McDaniel's is a hip hop legend, and he runs a video music box in on on WNYC TV and WNYE TV. So this is yeah, this is great. It's going to be really cool. I know Jonathan's going to be there, front and center. All right. So okay. So last but not least, of course, we've got Anne McDermott, who's going to be speaking on behalf of the membership committee. So take it away, Anne. Alrighty. Uh, again, our apologies to everybody who wasn't able to or went to the Montauk Club. And I, I've got I've fielded several emails here. I'm really, really sorry. What can you say? We wanted to I wanted to go. I was ready to take that Q train, but uh, the, the club had other ideas. Any case. OK, so we're doing very uh, well in membership here. We're, uh, we're really excited. In May, we had eight new members join us. From May, uh, May 1st on, we have one member who's still pending, and we have three members who we're planning to interview with the next board meeting on June 19th. So that's all uh, really good news. And uh, thanks to Bob's efforts. Thank you, Bob. Uh, we are going to be having a uh, Gannick social event at uh, uh, Sojourn Social on um, 2nd Avenue between 89th and 88th Street. And if you're not familiar with the neighborhood, that's literally just two blocks from the Q train, from the end of the Q train. So it's very easy to get to. And you could take the number six as well uh, to get there. So that's going to be a, um, we're going to have some snacks and some uh, appetizers and uh, it's a cash bar. So if you want to have, you know, beer or wine or whatever, you'll just have to pay for that. Uh, but that'll be fun. And uh, we're thinking and planning about having other outdoor events in the summertime. It may be some of the outdoor parks. 
um, maybe at uh, South Street Seaport or the Christopher Street Pier or what have you. We just need to look at the schedules that are uh, for the events that are already going on at those places. But just to get bring people together. The whole goal here is for you to talk to other guides about guiding and to schmooze and to network. And as Emma said earlier, you know, every job I've gotten uh, in my three years of being a guide has been through somebody I knew through Gannick. So Gannick is just a fabulous resource uh, for pursuing um, touring. And if you have any ideas of venues or uh, things you'd like to organize, let us know. And you're more than welcome to, through the membership committee, uh, do that. And we'll, um, you know, we'll support you. And maybe if you take some pictures, we'd put them on the Facebook page. It's always good to have pictures from these things so people can see, hey, those people all got together. How come I wasn't part of the party? You are part of the party. Everybody here is part of the party. And if we were in person and you were a new member, I would have you stand up and introduce yourself and, you know, get to know everybody. But we're here on, on Zoom. Um, but we will do that. We will be in person at the Museum of the City of New York next month. Thank you, Bob. Appreciate that one because I actually live not too far from there. And um, I'm in that neighborhood all the time. So so there, that's it. That's the membership. And as Emma said, continue just you know inviting your friends to come along and be part of the, the Gannick world. And um, yeah, there you go. Yeah, thank you, Anne. Yeah, and the happy hour event is a great, that's a great time to bring non-members, to bring, you know, um, people who are, I don't know, say Gannett curious, <laughs> have them come and see and see what we're like. Uh, a lot of people, I think, have a sort of a rather old impression of Gannick that we're some kind of really closed, cliquey club. And we're not. We're a lot of fun. And so that'll be great. And as Bob, oh, Bob Gilbert said, the owner of Sojourn, so Sojourn Social, he would like to supply food for a an outdoor organic gathering too so some free munchies that was always good it's always good so we're getting a lot of love and so bring your um bring your colleagues um and get them to to join in so jeremy i believe we, we have our speaker from brooklyn is now here we can promote her to a yes speaker. uh i will be promoting her to a panelist so uh uh, uh yaraldina uh, pacheco will be uh will be speaking with our, our membership here just a second just make sure that that went through should just take a few seconds to uh, switch her over to a panelist. There we go. I think that is done. Uh, so uh, if you could just uh, yeah, uh, open up your camera and uh, unmute, and we're happy to allow you to address our membership here. And thank you for joining us. Awesome. Hi, everybody. Yeah. I apologize for being a little bit late. I actually went down to the venue. Um, and then I came back, but no, uh, no problem. I'm in Brooklyn, <laughs> so it wasn't terrible. Uh, so yes, my name is Geraldine Pacheco. I am the manager of tourism and community initiatives with the Brooklyn Chamber of Commerce. Um, so what that entails really on the tourism side, I oversee the Brooklyn Tourism Council, which is the first, um, I believe it's the first of the Brooklyn um, borough. And so they consist of members from, um, all businesses uh, here in Brooklyn. Uh, there's a few tour guides, um, some attractions here, like the cemetery, the Greenwood Cemetery, um, the Prospect Park Zoo as well. And uh, yeah, we have some other local um, neighborhood organizations as part of the Tourism Council as well. Um, and so is Harvey, who's a part of Aganic. Uh, so um, the Tourism Council was basically initiated August of 2022. And so um, obviously we saw the need for tourism here in Brooklyn. Uh, it hasn't bounced back completely to what we would expect it to be, um, especially you know with the pandemic and whatnot. Um, and again, we just want folks to know more about Brooklyn. So really it is a group of folks that love the borough, um, is dedicated to bringing more tourism to the borough. And we're just working um, with little projects uh, that, that can increase tourism. So a little bit about the Tourism Council, like I said, it just initiated in August. So it's been around for almost a year. Uh, and within the, the, the council, we have uh, four subcommittees and these subcommittees came about because we discussed some issues that again, we're dealing with still um, in tourism. So one of the uh, subcommittees is marketing and promotion. Another is neighborhood experiences and tours. Um, 
one, uh, the third one is transportation and infrastructure. And then the last one is the Explore Brooklyn website uh, page. So um, I'm not sure if anyone's familiar. I know there used to be some type of Explore Brooklyn project um, along with the chamber. However, that was put on hold. I think that was the last um, update uh, about that was from like 2017, 2016, but that was scrapped. And what initially it was and what it will be um, now again is it was a website for all things Brooklyn. So um, again, people would be able to book a tour through there. They would be able to see uh, what businesses are in certain neighborhoods. Um, again, what local, who the local, uh, sorry, council members are as well. So it was really just like a one-stop all Brooklyn thing. And so that's what we're hoping to bring back. Um, again, we were um, awarded some grant money um, so uh, to work on this website. And so the website... Um, we hope to launch sometime really, you know, as many of you know, uh, it takes some time to, to launch a website. And so the goal, again, with the Tourism Council and with the specific committee is to work with the entire borough and trying to see this website come to life. So again, the idea is for this website to be the one-stop place for all thing Brooklyn's. Um, so we would like to advertise that not only to the local folks, um, also the domestic um, and international folks, um, just to kind of see what Brooklyn is all about. Um, I don't know if anyone has any questions. I know I just said a lot about just the tourism council <laughs> in such a little time. So um, I know there's a QA. Oh, oh here, yeah, here's a cute question from uh, Gary Dennis. Hi, Gary. Uh, can the Brooklyn Tourism Council have any pull with getting merchants off the Brooklyn Bridge? Uh, and just to clarify, if you don't know what he's talking about, any uh, those of us tour guides to either just walk across the bridge ourselves or do tours there, certainly it's worse on the Manhattan side, but from the Manhattan side, pretty much to the towers, it is nonstop cluttered with vendors, people, illegal vendors selling stuff, people with those weird spinny photo things, blasting Empire State of Mind. And uh, I, I, I can speak personally, I have stopped doing Brooklyn Bridge tours because I find it to be a, a horrific and dangerous uh, condition. So we'll get to that one first and I'll get to Gary's, uh, Gary's other uh, question. And it's Gary knows, it's a safety issue. It's, it's really quite dangerous. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's actually something that was brought up, I believe. So in the first uh, first two uh, tourism meetings, I know that folks, well, not exactly the bridge one, but just like in general, the merchants, uh, they were talking about the street vendors and what we could do um, either to like, uh, I don't know, come to some kind of, uh, sorry, come to some kind of compromise with them, whether like they they move areas or something, but this is the first I've heard of the Brooklyn Bridge. Now I know um, the Merchant Association down there would probably be Dumbo. And so Dumbo, uh, the Merchant Association, they do meet with us. Um, I think they do have some members uh, as a part of the Tourism Council. But then on the other side, um, the Chamber also hosts a monthly meeting for all the bids and Merchant Association. So that's definitely something where this um, can be brought up. So I am more than happy to, to take this uh, question to uh, to the, the Mark, who he handles um, all the bid and Merchant Association meetings. I'm sure this is something he can bring up um, in the next meeting as well. And and I, and I they could probably get uh, give you a better answer than myself. Yeah, one thing I'll add just personally is if you could have like someone, doesn't have to be anyone specific, but have one of them walk across the bridge like on, on a nice day, obviously not a smoky day like today, but a nice day. And it's one, it's so bad, you have to see it to believe it. It's 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 really kind of hard to uh, mm -hmm. uh, to see. Um, and his Gary's other question is, what about a Brooklyn Bridge Visitor Center, perhaps on the Dumbo side of the, the bridge? Because it is such a big attraction. Yeah, that would also be great. Um, I think that would be a very good topic again to also bring the Dum Dumbo Merchant Association. I know. Uh, I'm trying to off the top of my head. I, I don't remember their name, but again, we meet monthly with them, so that's definitely something I can bring up with them. How the tourism uh, council can help with that is again just kind of leading the the meetings with folks. I'm setting up these meetings, uh, connecting you again with the right people. Okay. Uh, let me see what the other questions are here. Gary says it should be on the 
uh, other side, both sides of the bridge, but this person, we can only speak to Brooklyn uh, uh, tonight. But yes, I agree. We, I'm just in general, the city could use more visitor center. Um, uh, Annette wants to know, uh, you may have mentioned, is there a website for the council uh, where people could get updates about your work? Yeah, so currently there isn't um, a website specifically for the council. Like I said, um, we are working for the Explore Brooklyn. Um, again, that uh, won't really be like our specific website. It's the website we will be handling. However, I am currently the person um, you can ask uh, any questions regarding tourism. Um, and I know that if you go on our website, uh, for the Brooklyn Chamber, so uh, I think it's just brooklynchamber.com. <laughs> um, I think you can be linked to our buzz articles, and that's where um, most of the folks just kind of get updates about what we do um, whenever we meet. But yes, I I can also drop my in, my email down in the chat um, if you have any other questions. But I I am the person um, you would uh, ask anything tourism related uh, again with Brooklyn. Uh, let me see what else here. Oh, um, yeah, Robin Gar says, uh, the merchants on the Brooklyn Bridge are dangerous. We need to, I guess it's just more just telling everyone, we need to bombard 311 with complaints and to contact your city council members and complain. Yes, that is definitely, um, definitely good advice to make, make uh, you know, make them aware of that. Um, and Benedict uh, notes that about the Brooklyn Bridge, there used to be souvenir vendors on the Dumbo side along the sidewalk, but not any, uh, not anymore. Um, but yeah, they, they tend to be like on the kind of more, Manhattan half of the bridge, but they just keep ex expanding. Like, uh, um, yeah, just yeah, just keep expanding on there. Any other uh, members? Any other last minute uh, questions? Um, yeah, but I agree with you. We definitely need to bring more tourists back to uh, to Brooklyn. You know, beyond the bridge. <laughs> Sometimes uh, the other side of the bridge is, is most of. Uh, actually, fun little anecdote. I did a tour for a group uh, a few weeks ago and they asked where I was from and I said oh I live in Brooklyn and they were like oh we went to Brooklyn it was a nice little neighborhood and I was just like oh I, I knew exactly what they were talking about uh they thought like they went to like that one corner of Dumbo that everybody goes to and I was yes. like, no, like no 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 it's like 2.8 million people you 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 saw you saw this this yeah, you saw uh, this any other and there's there's a lot uh yeah. no yeah so uh, just uh one other exciting um update again that were uh, what, what I'm hoping to bring. Um, so may, again, many of you may or may not be familiar with the chamber, but the chamber recently opened a retail store uh, down in Industry City. And so the retail store, what it uh, what is doing, it's highlighting uh, BIPOC and women owned businesses here in all over Brooklyn. And so we selected, I believe about uh, 55 vendors or so. Um, and again, about like 200 folks from all over Brooklyn applied um, to be in the store. And so we're selling stuff from like tea sets to candles, um, really anything you can think of. Uh, and it's down again in Industry City. And so uh, the way we want to tie this in with tourism, again, is we are hoping to have some type of brochure pamphlet that highlights, again, all things here in Brooklyn would highlight all the neighborhood tours um, and experiences. And so we hope to we're working on that now. Um, we hope to have that, you know, sometime soon, because again, summer is here. Um, that's, I'm sure it's busy time for you guys. It's busy time for us. Um, and it'll be very busy in the store. And so um, just one way for folks to stop by, A, do some shopping, and then B, get some more information about uh, Brooklyn as well. Okay. Um, I'm not seeing any more questions. So I think that uh, may have been it, but if anyone has any last minute questions, feel free to just quickly throw them in. But otherwise, we do want to thank you for coming out and being obviously uh, uh, quick with the change. This is on this very fast moving, uh, unprecedented day here in New York. So thank you for, for joining. Actually, let me see. Uh, Susan Solar uh, says store hours. I'm not entirely sure what the um, uh, question is there, but uh, four hours can... um, for the retail store. Again, it's down in Industry City Building 5, it is on the ground level. Um, it is right next to the frying pan. There's a St. Mark's comic um, and the Moore's Brother Winery. And uh, so the store is open, set, um, yeah, seven days a week. I think uh, Monday through, Sunday through Thursday, it is open um, 11 to 7. And then Friday and Saturday, it is open from 11 to 8. Okay, great. great. Thank you that we we actually had a wonderful meeting out um 
in Industry City at the Fort Hamilton um, Brewery. So it's really, it's, a, it's such an amazing place. I hadn't, I'd been to one little part of it, but I hadn't seen how big it was. And it was just really, really fantastic. There's so many cool things going on in Brooklyn. Um, where I work, I have a great view right onto the Brooklyn Bridge. So I do send guests there, but I can see how crowded it gets. And this is something that um, tour, that tour guides have been noticing for a really long time. And it definitely is a huge safety issue. I mean, I think I'm wondering if it's because, you know, it's Brooklyn and Manhattan. So they're like, well, you guys do it. And then they're like, well, no, you guys do it. And so the men are sort of like, well, we'll do it. And they just have sort of scuttled on there and, and filled it. I mean, it's chalk, chalk full. I honestly, where I, I can see when it's getting crowded, I don't send guests to walk over the Brooklyn Bridge. I tell them, you know, take the train to Brooklyn, go further out, you know, go to Prospect Park. Now it's nice, you know, go all the way to Coney Island. But um, we, uh, tour guides, honestly, we get to a point where in the summer, we'll be saying, we'll tell people to avoid the Brooklyn Bridge, which I don't think is what the Brooklyn Tourism Office wants to hear. So um, yeah, the vendors would be, um, I think you could, it would be eye-opening just for yourself if you were to walk over it one day and be like, what is going on? Because it's, it's like, a, it's like a, vendor mosh pit um, with confused tourists trying to <laughs> trying to make their way through the crowd. I'm sure this is a again a concern for you folks and, and I'm sure the Dumbo Merchant Association has also heard about this. So I definitely uh, yeah. will will bring this uh, actually, we have our tourism council meeting um, this following Wednesday at 12. So that's definitely something I can bring up um, and see, yeah, see what other folks are thinking about it. Because again, uh, this is not just the only concern at the Brooklyn Bridge. It's the concern in other major tourists oh, yeah. like here in Brooklyn. Uh, yeah. So I, yeah, I'm definitely curious to see um, their take on this. Um, and just like you mentioned, uh, Industry City, it's very busy and there's a lot of things to do. And actually, um, earlier I was meeting with um, NYC and now they're NYC and conventions, tourism and conventions, not NYC and go. Um, yeah, I met with them earlier. They are trying to bring a program here down to Sunset Park. Um, it's called Tourism Ready. And so again, it's the, the whole initiative is to partner up with local um, businesses and attractions. So uh, down here in Sunset Park, it would be, for example, Industry City, the Greenwood Cemetery, and the Brooklyn Grange. Um, and sort of just, again, creating a, a Sunset Park experience to, again, attract folks, see that there is more than just Industry City. Um, here and there's other stuff um, Sunset Park offers sort of just again for folks to spend a day in Sunset Park and kind of get to know um, uh, know the neighborhood and know the culture as well um, so we are working again and creating some type of experience there and I know that we are also trying to partner up with certain tour guides again that are familiar with a Brooklyn familiar with Sunset Park um, and again just to sort of uh, sell this great experience of Brooklyn and and like uh, Jerry me said a lot of folks like to say oh I went to Brooklyn and it's really just Dumbo or uh Williamsburg and then that's it and, and then they head out um but yeah. there's a lot uh, there's a lot that Brooklyn has to offer I myself have only been here about a year and I feel like just by working with the chamber I've gotten to know a lot of different neighborhoods here in Brooklyn so um yes it's it's a lot of things we we want to share and and what's the what's the um What's the slogan of Brooklyn? Spread love. It's the Brooklyn way. So that's what we want to do. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, great. Well, thank you so, so much for coming to speak with us, Ms. Pacheco. We really, really appreciate it. And um, I can tell you that you've got a resource here with Gannett Guides. Don't ask me. I'm not a very good Brooklyn guide, but a lot of other um, Gannett Guides are. They're brilliant, brilliant guides. And, you know, they love talking about it. And we love all our boroughs. And, um, you know, Brooklyn has that that je ne sais quoi that brings everybody over to it. So thank you very much for coming. And I'm sure um, we will, you will have members popping up in your inbox with random questions. Um, and we're very excited. All thank right. You for me. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye now. So thank you. So um, I think that's really all um, we have for now, unless I'm, anyone on the board or any of the other committee chairs have anything they need to add. Um, you can also go into if any of our members have any new business or something like to bring up. Apologies, 
for the chat not working properly. It's sort of a glitchy, weird kind of day. I think there's smoke in everybody, <laughs> including in our, our Zoom accounts. Um, so let me see, a question just popped up in here. Um, oh, did Gary just mention there was some um, parks enforcement on the bridge giving out tickets when they come back? I mean, it's really kind of a whack-a-mole kind of, kind of situation there. So yeah, um, I mean, um, Ms. Pacheco kindly um, give us her email. Um, I don't know, take a little video and and document what's going on and then um, and then put it out there. So I see a couple of people have raised their hands. Um, so Rosalind and Harvey. Um, so let me see. So Harvey's here. Um, I'm good. I'm going to promote Harvey to a panelist uh, so he can um, uh, join us. And I just want to jump in because I know that we had gotten an email from from uh, uh, Roslyn and a few others of people who went to the Montauk Club. Again, I kind of addressed this at the start, but people who went to the Montauk Club um, and were upset they didn't know. Uh, and again, we apologize. This was a fast moving situation. We tried to let everybody know as quickly as we found out, which was, as you guys know, very last minute, um, as this was a fast moving day. Everybody who had been registered for the meeting did uh, receive an email. And, you know, we were, we, you know, sometimes we, we make mistakes and we will certainly try to always discuss how we can better communicate these things. But uh, all, all we can ask is for your forgiveness and grace on, on today, which was a, a incredibly fast paced uh, and very unprecedented day uh, in, in New York. But for those who, who did feel kind of put out by that, you know, it's, um, it just we, we do apologize and we appreciate your understanding. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. I'd like to reiterate that. Yeah, we're really sorry about it. Literally <laughs> at work, um, everybody's all over the place and emails and text messages and messages going back and forth. And we're just trying to get the information out as soon as we could. So Harvey, um, you were you have an announcement for us. If you lower your camera a little bit, maybe we'll oh, see. You hi, I, I, I can't do that, but I hope you can see me better. Yep. Yes, okay, now we've got a little, a little brighter. At, thank you. At any rate, Thank you. I just I just got home and uh, we're on our way. Pat uh, Mazuka was with me. We're driving into Brooklyn, and uh, we found out that the meeting was canceled. So we we you know we we made lemonade out of lemons that we had, and I gave Pat a tour of Brooklyn, giving a little uh, history of, of my background and showing the neighborhoods that she was not familiar with. So we really made the most of of visiting Brooklyn. And uh, we stopped off uh, one of my favorite places near the end, Nathan's, and uh, had one of their delicious hot dogs. And uh, traffic was unbelievable. So I, I just came to my house and I caught the tail end of uh, Geraldine's, Geraldine's talk. So I'm glad she was able to make it and contribute and uh, make it worthwhile. She was one. She was wonderful, and I'm really glad that we finally got to hear from her, and um, and we and we got to to speak with her. So I think that's that's great, and and just getting that out that you know about the dangerous spenders on the Brooklyn Bridge, I think is a super important thing because that's going to be right on her mind when she goes back to speak to um, the chamber, but goes back to speak to to the board. And um, Harvey, thank you. Um, for um, also with all your work and on your and your work on industry relations with Bob, I heard we heard um, Bob's report and he went to a lot of different places. So we really we really do appreciate that. And for slapping out to Brooklyn and for driving back to Jersey. Yeah. Okay. Um, so anything else from you, Harvey? Or I'm glad you had a hot dog. I, I want uh, one. Now. <laughs> no, it. Uh... Everything's, everything's moving along. But when I spoke to Bob earlier, I understand we might be able to get the Montauk uh, place for our September meeting. I don't know if that was brought up or yep. what the story is. So yep. good things so, may happen to good people. I don't know. Yes, exactly. We'll like, we'll, we'll keep making lemon, um, lemonade out of those, out of those lemons.